How many glad to be here tonight? I am so glad. Amen. It's just better just sitting at home and hiding out. Right? It is. Right? It's just awesome to be in God's house with God's people and just trust in God with everything that's out there. Amen? That's what we're supposed to do. Let's go a little prayer before we get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the love you've got for us, for allowing us to come to your church to worship your Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, to put him on the pedestal above every name, above every person, above, above every family member. He is number one, and we thank you for that. God, just be with us. Don't let nothing that I've already been prayed over and was praying this same thing I'm about to say. Don't let nothing come out of my mouth that's not from you. And God, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Don't let my mouth even be able to open if it's not from you. And God, just use me as your vessel, as your uh, work hand, as someone that just truly loves you with all his heart. And I want everybody to know that I truly love you with all my heart, God. You know my heart. So God, please just use me. And let it be all about you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm excited to be here. I said, I'm also with When Pastor texted me and asked me to do this tonight, I said, Praise God. You know, when when I <clears throat> when he calls me or texts me and says, Would you preach? I start thinking right then what God wants me to do. Because every time that he calls me to, to preach. God teaches me something while I'm getting prepared to bring it to you. And he also spanks me first before he spanks you. And, I, and it's an awesome thing. It's awesome to be able to hear from God, know what God wants. Well, as I was preparing, am I too loud? It's just me, okay. As I was preparing, I'm fine if everybody else is fine, Pastor. Uh, as I was preparing, if I was preparing this, God laid on my heart by some people calling, texting me, and asking me some questions. And the question that he was asking is what Tisha brought Sunday uh, when she talked about Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. Can you lose your salvation? So I've been praying about that. I've been studying. I know what I believe. I know what I got from God's word. And I just want to share it and enjoy one of these days. I don't know when, because Tisha has spoken on joy that he's going to be preaching about this. I don't know when it's coming, but he's going to be preaching on this particular matter. So God put two things together for me tonight. First thing he put, only Jesus. Amen. Only Jesus. Hallelujah. And the second thing, that he put on to me tonight is and, and, and the thing that, that, that touches my heart so much is the Lamb's Book of Life. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. That final book, that final chapter, we're going to go from only Jesus and, to, and finish up with the final book. The very last book. So well, I'm going to share with you what God laid on my heart about this part here in the beginning of the scriptures. That there's a times in my life, I'm going to put myself on the bus again. There's times in my life, as I've studied God's word, as I've looked up, there's so many people. How many, how many truly like to read God's word about certain people in, in, in the word? Like Moses, for instance, or Abraham, or Job, or you know, I can name them, Paul, uh, David. And, and, you know, the, the, one of the biggest things is that as a child growing up uh, was uh, the whale. Yeah. I thought about the whale, that big fish, you know, this water, Jonah. I mean, as a child growing up, that, that was a, to me, that was a fairy tale. But it wasn't. It was true. And it took me as I got a little older to figure that out. But I would look at that. And the next thing you know, I would think more about Jonah, about David, about Moses than I did about Jesus. I'm serious, church. We've got to go somewhere else. Listen, one of my best books of the Bible is at the very beginning of Genesis when Adam was created by God when it was a perfect place here on earth, when there was no sin at the very beginning, when everything was perfect. And I, I would look at that and I would think about that. I would, I would, in my mind, I would sit there and think, my goodness, this, this is awesome. 
to imagine that I'm going to be standing face to face with God, walking down the pool of the day, talking to God about no telling what, a perfect God, and I, I'm living in a perfect world. I, I put myself in the, in the place of Adam, okay? How, how wonderful that would be to, to be there. With that. And then forget, David, it's not about Adam. It's only Jesus. It's only Jesus. Let, let, me, say this one. let me say this from the bottom of my heart. And, I, and, and God laid this on my heart so strong in the last few days that it is so easy and so very simple to get into God's Word and not even know about Jesus. I'm serious. You will put something else before Him. Let me tell you this. Jesus was at the beginning of Genesis. And He is at the end of Revelation. There's, listen, I can show you. I can what? Just give me a minute. This is not there, so if you don't believe me, get your Bible back and look. Uh, First Corinthians, let me look see if I wrote that down. First Corinthians chapter 10. Yes, First Corinthians chapter 10. 1 through 4 says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Talk about Moses. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock Amen. that followed them, and that rock was only Jesus. That rock was only Jesus. Jesus walked with them. Jesus was there. This is, I know in the time of Moses when they put the blood up over the doorpost and they, and they Evil come and kill all the firstborn babies. What do you think that blood really was? The blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed for you was shed for them. God, listen to me. God knew at the very beginning of time that Adam was going to screw up. He did. He knew it. He knew that, that Noah was going to, him and his only family was the only ones that was going to to make it through all the people in that world that got completely destroyed. He knew that. But yet he also knew that he was going to have to give his only begotten son up for each and every one of us so we wouldn't perish. Let me say this. I'm probably getting ahead of myself. Moses, Job, David, Abraham, the father of all nations, Paul, that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, none of them died for you and me. Not one of them died for you and me. There's not one of them in the Bible that can heal you or me. There's not one of them in the Bible that can give you the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. We've got to be careful because as churches, we get wrapped up in preaching about each and every one of these. And I, listen, I'm guilty. I told you. I throw myself from the bus. Because as I was growing up, I learned about everything in the book of this Bible. And God put them in there for a reason. Listen to me. God put every one of them there for a reason. To teach us. Amen. To teach us. To show us that, listen, everyone from Adam to Paul sinned. Only Jesus did it. Only Jesus did it. Everybody else has sinned, but only Jesus did. Every one of us. Every one of us has sinned. Jesus never sinned. The only thing Jesus did is took your sins. Took your sins away. Every one of us. Let's, let's go into the message, man. I thought we needed to go back straight to it. Romans 5, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through only Jesus. Let me say this, church. There's, Paul can't give you peace. Job can't give you peace. Adam can't give you peace. Abraham can't give you peace. 
Only Jesus can give you peace. Only Jesus. By faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Of the glory of God. If you want the glory of God, listen, there's no one in this Bible can give it to you. Only Jesus. He's the only one who can give it to you. Don't let if anybody teaches you or tells you anything different, run. I'm serious, run. Literally, just get up and run. I don't care who it is. Run. Romans 5, 3 through 4 says, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. How many of you in here has tribulation? And listen, when you go through them, does, is, is Joe there with you? No. Only Jesus. I don't care. Listen, it's good to go through tribulation, church. Because it grows you. There's hope in tribulation. Because guess who you're going to turn to? Only Jesus. That's who you're going to turn to is only Jesus. There's nobody else. And when you turn to Jesus, you got hope. You got peace. Nobody else can give it to you. And by that, by that, you can share your testimony that what Jesus did for you, not what Paul, or Peter, or James, or John. But what Holy Spirit Jesus does you during your testimony. Why you went through what you did because of what you failed and caused yourself to do by the sin of your life. There's not a testimony that anybody shares that hasn't been sinned in. It wouldn't be a testimony, David. It could be. And, and what the best thing about a testimony is, it's not the glory of you. It's the glory of only Jesus. Amen. Romans 5, 5 through 6 says, Now hope does not disappoint. Has anybody ever been hopeful to disappoint sometimes? Huh? They did the church, they had it. Every one of us said they had it, right? Because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. That it, it's only your fault. Listen to me. It's only your fault if you don't keep the hope and you don't keep the joy. Charles Priest on Sunday. It's only your fault. It's only my fault. Because through Jesus, when disappointment comes, and I sit there and let disappointment eat at me, it's going to put me in depression. Yeah. It's going to get me at the point that I get angry sometimes, even at God. I do, Pastor. I get angry sometimes, even at God. And God says, hope, not in man, not in yourself, hope in Jesus. And then the disappointment is all gone. The disappointment is all taken away. Listen, me and Hira was talking to David a while ago, and, and, and Hira was sharing with me some things about how some things we pray for. How many of you pray for it? Hard to do both things. Huh? And I'm not picking on you guys. But Hiram said this. He, he was talking about his own car. And, and about leaking antifreeze, I think, or something. But I know my wife and, and his wife prayed over several years ago and it took care of it. It took care of it. Listen, God expects you to pray from your heart, things that you need, not that you want. It's so much easier, Pastor, if you pray for the car. But that'll be God says you need that. Let's all pray for Pastor. That's what I feel right now. How many of you agree that we can pray for Pastor's car and it's going to be on okay. time? Let's stand up pray for that. That's the Holy Spirit. Everybody stand up. Heavenly Father, we just come right now. We rebuke what Satan's trying to do. Listen. God, you're bigger than this little car that passes God. I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever's going on in it, you fix it, you make it work. I pray that even the Lord ain't going to be no expense to it. That it's all going to be okay because you're getting ready to do it. And we're going to give you the glory right now, Lord. We trust that you believe in the name
name of Jesus, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll come up to this day, Pastor. Romans 5, only Jesus. Romans 5, 8 through 10 says, Love God. Love God. Love God. I love that, though. When, when you ain't got no place to turn to, you can't say, but Job or but Abraham, you gotta go, but God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that when we were all still sinners, Christ died for us, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Not David. Not Job. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Get the coach here. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, only Jesus, much more have been reconciled, we shall be saved by who? Yeah. Only Jesus. There's nobody in this world can die for you. Your family can't take care of you and put you in heaven. It's only Jesus. And listen, that's what we need to speak all the time. When we're talking about anything or anybody, I, listen, you can talk about both of all you want. But finish it up, only Jesus. You can talk about Job, what he went through, and everything. Job could have got through without only Jesus. Because you know why? God, Father, God, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. They're one. And if they're one, Jesus was there with Moses. He was there with Job. He was there the whole time. The Holy Spirit was there. God breathed the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus. I mean, that's what the Bible is all about. We want, sometimes we make it more than what we should because we put everybody else in front of Jesus. God says, don't do that. Even with his word, don't do that. Make sure it's always Jesus. Amen? Everybody have a great day. Amen. 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 All right. And Romans 5, 14, 15, it says, Nevertheless, death reigns from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, thus more the grace of God, and the gift by the grace of one man, only Jesus, Christ abounded to many. Listen, sin started with Adam. It did not start with Eve. Don't let nobody ever tell you that. Eve, Eve did sin. But who did God hold accountable? Men, who does God hold accountable? Man. He holds you accountable. He, he holds every one of us with our family. I don't care. Your wife might do something that you don't like. You might, she might mess up. She might do things that's not right. But are you teaching her the word that only Jesus is who she looks at? And if you live it, she will see it. And that's what we need to do. If you live it, and that's what we all need to do. We need to live it. You know, I hope my wife, and I know that she does, she tells people that I love Jesus more than her. She, I've heard her say it to her own family member that truly I love Jesus more than my wife. Amen. And she loves Jesus more than she loves me. Amen. And that's what it's all about. Only Jesus, church. Amen. You cannot put no family member above him. Amen. You can't. I preach this many times, past that too. You cannot put no family member, that little sweet boy there. You cannot put him before Jesus. As a dad and a mama, we are supposed to take care of these kids. We're supposed to raise them right. We're supposed to do them right. We're supposed to discipline them right. And we're supposed to love them like we never thought we could love anything. But you still never love them more than you do Jesus. You just don't do it. You don't love them more. Than you love them. But Jesus got me loved more than first. So, you know, of course, what they're talking about here, Adam was the first sinner. Adam committed the first sin. Even though Eve went with Satan and, and took up the fruit and she gave it to her husband. But her husband, let me, let me say this, this is what got out of my heart. He literally walked with God as I shared with y'all before. He had a relationship with God where sin wasn't there yet. He walked with God. He talked with God. He was out. He didn't need anything. That's to me is like what's going to be like in heaven. Walking and talking with Jesus. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean anything. And then when he allowed his wife, she didn't put a gun to him. You can't see the word of the Bible. She twists his arm, beat him, threatened him. 
She just handed it to him. And he took it. And the minute that he took it, the minute that he took it, church, listen to me, the minute that he took it, when he, he didn't have to buy it, Pastor. He took it. And he denied Jesus right there. He said, no, we're not. And that's where sin come in. The first thing, but the good thing is, because of Jesus, because of his grace, the grace of God, the gift that God sent his son, Jesus Christ come down and took care of all those sins. Amen. Every one of them. Amen. Every one of them. And that's what, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Man. My goodness. It, just, I tell you, it gives me chill bumps. Romans 5, 19 through 21 says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. So whatever Adam Paul started and everything, and we, we grew up, we were raised, we was born into sin. Every one of us here was born into sin. But moreover, with all effort that the offense might have found, but where sin of family grace. Only Jesus. Grace, only Jesus. About the much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace, look at the cross, might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life. Are you is your name written in the, the Lamb's Book of Life? I, I don't know. How many of you know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Huh? The eternal book. So it looks like everybody in this church. We got to stand up, raise your hand. I, I feel like everybody in this church knows without a shadow of doubt that your name's in that book. Huh? We well, give God another hand. I'm serious. My goodness, Jesus, you may come back to us and we're going to open that book up. And you already know that you're in there. Well, we're going to be talking about some good stuff when we get done. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through Christ to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. With only Jesus do you have eternal life. With only Jesus. There's not a one of them in the Bible can give you eternal life with Jesus. Not a one. The final book. Y'all need to take some notes. The final book. As Tisha mentioned this Sunday about Revelations chapter 3. I've been reading this earlier, way before Sunday. Been studying it, been questioning God like I always do. I said, God, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to hear from man. Amen. I want to know what you tell me. I don't want to know what man tells me. Me and Pastor are one. And, and I, I, I can feel his presence knowing what he believes and I believe the same thing. So I didn't even question him on this. Then he called and asked me, he didn't ask me. Never question, never ask me. God says, you just do what I tell you to do, and it's going to work. Amen. So the final book. I'm going to start in Exodus. There's a place in the Bible where God takes your name out of, the, out of his book. Now I want you to know that this is Old Covenant. Before I start reading it. I don't want you to get scared. I don't want you to get thinking thoughts. Am I going to get kicked out of the land of life? No, you're not. But I want you to I want you to look at this. Exodus 32 and 31 through 33. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, these people. How many times can, can we say that, Pastor? But sometimes I know what God, why God put them in here because sometimes we go through the same thing. And he's teaching us through them. But it's got to be only Jesus. Amen. We learn from the, the God's word, but only Jesus can give you the wisdom that you need and the knowledge that you need. Only Jesus. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, these people have committed a great sin. See, Moses, this, let me share this for a going for them. We got all night, so it don't matter. Amen. Moses had been going up to get the Ten Commandments. And everybody knows what was they doing while he was gone? 
party and they got built a golden calf. Yeah. And they were down there worshiping. Let me tell you this. God is a jealous God. Yeah. And you do not put nothing before him and make a of it. Not even now, even in the New Testament. Because if you're not a Christian and you do that, and you think you're a Christian, you better check yourself. Now, I'm going to show you that here in Scripture just shortly. These people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a God of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, block me out of your book with which you have written. I'm going to stop for just a minute. Now, now Pastor, I can't find any Scripture what I'm about to say exactly the word, but the Holy Spirit is laid on my heart. That sometimes when Moses was talking, he wanted himself to look real good. And what I mean by that, once before he went to God, because he wanted the people that he took out of there, that followed him, he wanted to get them to the promised land. That was his goal, and he went through so much. He was, he, was, he went through a lot. But he would go to God and say, God, why are you allowing this happen? When he got to the sea and he couldn't get across, why, God, you took me this far? Why didn't you let this through? How many of us as Christians have said that sometimes? God, you told me this. You, 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 you showed me, you got me this far. And, and now you're not going to let me go no further? Well, is it about you? No. It's not. No. It's not about Moses. It's only Jesus. Jesus. Only Jesus. Every one of them sitting there can say that. Every one of them. So he was, he was willing to have his man look what it says. But if I'm not, I pray, block me out of your book which you have written. Moses said, block me out of the book. It's scary. You think Moses was just upset? Maybe pastor, maybe he was angry, human, like we get sometimes with God. God, you took me this far. My people's down there. I, what are we going to do? Why are you doing this? I don't know. I, I'm not saying that's in Scripture. I'm just saying Holy Spirit's saying, look at us sometimes. We're no different than Moses. We get to the point sometimes where we say, why, God? Why? Pray, block me out of your book which you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, look at this. This is the only place I can find. And the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me. How do you sin against God? There's one sin. Listen to me. There's one sin that's not able to be forgiven. And that sin is not to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you don't do that, you are out of the book of the wrath of God. You're not already in it. You've not never been in it. Because you know truly, if you know truly, as I ask you, if you raise your hand, if you are truly saved, you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be trying to do your best to live right for God. Amen. And there's so many people who claim to be Christians that live two very different lives. Their name never was in the book. It wasn't. You have a relationship with God and you ask Jesus Christ in your heart, He's there. And he's never, ever, ever going to let him show you. I'm going to prove it to you just in a minute. And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. O covenant. O covenant. Jesus had not died on the cross yet. Jesus was talking about it. Oh, listen. You can go, I can take you to Isaiah. I can take you to the book of John. And I can prove to you that Jesus was talking about it. All through the Old Testament. I can prove to you. If you want to know, call me, text me, and I'll send you the scripture. Jesus was there. He was there. John 10, 27 through 30 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. Listen, he gives them eternal life. And they shall never, never, listen, they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch.
snatch them out of my hand. Amen. You cannot lose your salvation, folks. There's no way you can lose your salvation. If you think you can lose your salvation, you need to check yourself. You cannot lose it. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. And I and the Father are one as well as the Holy Spirit. You cannot be snatched out of God's hand. If you truly, listen, people that think that they're brought it out of the Lamb's Book of Life was never in it, church. They think it. They hope it. They're wishing it. But if they don't know, they're not. Because the Bible says you, you know without a shadow of doubt if you truly are saved. If you truly are saved, there's a change in your life. And you make a different walk in your life. Do you still mess up? Yes, every day. That's where Jesus died for your sin. Once you ask him in your heart, your past, your present, and your future sins have been took by the blood of Jesus. And no you still mess up, but they are covered by the blood. They are covered by the blood. Luke 10, 20, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You know you're not a number in heaven, church. You're a number here on earth. You've got a social security number. You've got a bank number. You're a member. They don't even know who your name is a lot of times. I wrote checks and never signed them and go right on through I have. I can prove it. Still got the check with my name. Went through it. My name ain't on the bottom of it. Years ago it happened. You're a number. There's not going to be a number in heaven. The only number that's going to mess up down here is 666. Six, six. You don't want that number. You don't want that number. Your name is in heaven. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. And this is the one that Peter was talking about Sunday. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will blot out. I will not blot out. See, you see how I said that at first? Did anybody catch it? What did I say? All right. It's so easy. God showed this to me back when I was reading it. It's so easy to say, I will blot out his name from the book of life. I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. If you go into the back of the book of Revelation, let me take you back a little bit further. If you got your Bible turn there. I just I won't confuse nobody. I want everybody to be on the same page. God wants you there. Revelation chapter 3. If you even go back to the second chapter, it talks about the seven churches. It talks about the seven candlesticks, which is the seven churches. It talks about the seven angels. Okay? There's different beliefs. I've heard it preached different ways. I've studied myself. Honestly, I do not believe that John Russell, I'm going to claim it, will not be here during tribulation. There's some preachers that will argue with you all day. You'll be here for three years over. You'll be here for all of them. I won't be here. They can talk, talk to me all they want. I'm going to be wrecked without here. I'm going to be wrecked without here. And I'm going to stand and I believe that with all my heart. I believe that with all my heart. But he's talking to the church of Sardis. So in chapter 3, first verse, And to the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he, that have the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works. This is Jesus talking right now. John wrote this, but this is Jesus. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. There's not a perfect person here on earth. Not none of us. Amen. 
We all mess up. But Jesus is saying, if you know who I am, and you say yes to me and ask me in your heart, you will never, ever wear that to be concerned about going to hell if he done done that for you. He went there for you. Jesus is going to hell for you. Everyone is there. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on, on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The ones that are truly worthy is the one that sees me. Which is going to be another book, and I, I might be, I think I've got that into the last book. There's several books that, that God's got that He opens up and He reads during the end times. But I really believe it on my heart. God's going to look at our works, Pastor. Works not going to get you to heaven. I want you to think what I'm saying. Work, you cannot work your way into heaven. You can't buy your way into heaven. Only through Jesus. But you are going to be looked at for your works. And this is what I believe with all my heart. That determines what kind of crowns or what kind of blessings you're going to get when you get to heaven. That's what it is. What, what are you going to get? When he judges you, what are you going to get? What have you done here? Have you, have you won anybody to him? Have you went to anybody and said, I want to tell you about Jesus? I, I really, this is not, I can't find this to prove this, what I'm getting ready about to say, but I think some of us are going to have bigger mansions than others. I think that. I think some of us is going to be doing different types of jobs. It's all going to be good, but I think it's going to be something because, you know, God says it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. It's going to be perfect. So, are we still going to be taking care of things for God? Huh? Has his angels ever quit work? No. What makes you think you're going to quit? Oh. I'm serious. What makes you think his angels are working and he's telling me that I'm going to be judging him? Oh. I, I can't wait to see what I'm going to have to do up there. So let's get ready right now and get started and start preparing. That's what he's talking about. Let's start preparing ourselves what we're going to be able to do up in heaven. Huh? I mean, I can think of some things I'd love to do. I think of some things I'd love to do here on earth, and I can't do them. Not able to do them. Verse 6. He that had the ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. We don't need to go no further now. I'm going to go back to Peter 3, 5. We go through all the seven churches. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not. Think about that now. Let's say it backwards. I will what? I want you to think of that. There's so many people who think that's what it says. I will blot you out. It's not a word in there says it will. I will not blot you out. His name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his name. So Jesus, if you have truly accepted him in your life, he has guaranteed you that you will not get blotted out of the book of life. Amen. He guarantees you. He guarantees you. And there's, there's scripture here where pastors and preachers can turn it around to make it look like that he does. He, they, they can make this thing look like that you lose your salvation if you're not perfect here on earth. Listen to me. If we're perfect here on earth, we didn't need Jesus in the first place. We did. We didn't need Jesus. How many times does Jesus got to die for your sin? He only died one time. He's not going to die no more. How many times you got to ask him in your life? There's only one time when the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit draws you. Me and Pastor can't draw you to get saved. Only the Holy Spirit can draw you. And that that point in time, it, listen, it's not a guarantee it'll come the second time either. So if the Holy Spirit's strong you right now, you're not for sure, and I thank everybody raised their hand, but if you're listening to me on Facebook and you're not for sure, now's the time, church. Now's the time. 
Cry out to him. You don't have to have me there. You don't have to have the pastor there. Cry to him. I don't care if you're right there, you're dead and watch this. Or you're listening to it going down the road. I don't care. Now's the time. Right this moment. There might not be a second chance. There's no second chance guarantee. Revelations 20, 11 through 15. This is going to be closing tonight. Then I saw the great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were open. Does it say books or books? Books. With an S. Books were open. And another book was open. So that means more than one, don't it? Huh? Yeah. Which is the book life. Woo! John Russell. Amen. And the dead were judged according to the works. According to what? The works. Huh? They were judged how? The works. What does that mean, David? It means what they did to go over here on the earth. What did you do? Raise him up. Only Jesus. That's what we're literally preaching. Pastor. Only Jesus. Amen. And the dead were judged according to the works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then, let me tell you all. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone, and anyone, I don't care, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yep. Doomed to hell. Yes, if your name is not in the Lamb's book of life, and you're not for sure that it is, you're definitely going to hell. There's no way, no better way to blunt to tell you it's the truth. If you do not know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior tonight, if you're watching, now's the time. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, church, I'm telling you. Churches need to wake up Amen. and preach only Jesus. Amen. It's okay to talk about the ones in the Bible. That's why we're there. But when you're preaching about it, when you're talking about it, let them know only Jesus. Amen. Only Jesus. He's the truth, the way. He's the beginning, the end, the alpha, the right. Yeah. He's all. There's nobody else who can give you Holy Spirit but Jesus. Amen. There's nobody else who can write your name in the book of life but Jesus. Amen. The only way to get in there is accepted. Amen. 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 I hope I haven't confused anybody. No. But it's the true word. Amen. Revelation is a hard book sometimes. But if you, if you truly want to read it, study it, go pray about it. And the Holy Spirit will show you things that just like He showed me. Things that just kind of blow you out of the water. This might be somebody here tonight that before I started this and said, Yes, I'm going to be in the Lamb's Book of Life. And now you're, you're, you're one. I'm not saying what it is. I'm just saying it could be. I'm not feeling nothing. I'm not judging nobody. But my heart goes out to anybody that's not for sure. <coughs> it goes out to anybody that's not, that's not for sure. That you're in the Lamb's Book of Life. Everybody stand with me. Heavenly Father, I just come lifting up only Jesus to you. I thank you so much for your son that died on the cross. I thank you so much, Jesus, for what you did. You come to send the Holy Spirit to live in me when I ask you to live in my life. Only you, Jesus. With those stripes, my body is healed. Hallelujah. Only you, Jesus. Only Jesus. And I want to thank you for that, Lord. I want to thank you for what you've done tonight, for using me as a, just a, 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 a vessel that is not even smart enough to get up here and, and say nothing, but only you, Jesus, am I able to do that. God, I pray for people that, that is concerned about, are they in the Lamb's Book of Life? God, you say that we will know without a shadow of a doubt, we will know 
if we truly are. If there's anybody listening to me tonight, Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, would just fall upon them. That they just get on their knees and cry out to you and say, I want to be sure. It is so simple. All you got to do is say, Jesus, I've sinned. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to, to allow me to go to be in eternity with you forever and ever. And I accept you. Your gift that you gave me by dying on that cross for me. I pray, Lord, that there's people right now doing that. That Holy Spirit is dealing with. God, I just love you so much. And I thank you for allowing me to stand up here and preach the truth. Because it's only you. And I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.